This is the grade 12 CAT or Computer Application Technology PRAC exam or paper one from November 2021, the final matric exam paper. And we are busy with question three, the Excel or spreadsheet question. We are in the third question, question three. And just remember when we're doing spreadsheet questions and using formulas, make sure that you follow these notes. Formulas for all calculations in the spreadsheets must be done. Use functions and formulas. The absolute cell references only when necessary to ensure that the formula is correct when you copy it and insert formulas in such a manner that the results will still be obtained if we change the existing data. So you don't want to use raw numbers where possible or static numbers. You want to use cell references wherever possible. And there are building blocks that you can use in other spaces to like break it down into little parts if you need to. So let's get into it. So let's open up the project. I've already opened up three projects, the spreadsheet and the little trick here with the spreadsheets, particularly make sure that you are working on the right worksheet because the spreadsheet could have multiple worksheets. So when we go into it, make sure that you are in sheet one so that we apply the right changes to the right worksheet. So question 3.1, insert the picture three logo found in the folder in cell A1 so that it covers the entire cell. So let's go into it. Let's go into the project. There we go. There is A1. We want to insert a cell. So we can enable editing here so that we can edit this document. We want to insert a picture into that block. So I'm going to click on it and insert a picture. You might see the word picture there. I've got illustrations. I'll pick one of the pictures there. Thank you. I want to do a picture from this device. These are the images in the folder and we want the three logo one. So we're going to use that one. When I insert it, it's going to, I want it to fit to that particular block. So it's a nice small image. So let's make it fit to the whole block. Make sure that it all fits in there. I'm not sure if they want this property, but there is a property where we can go and format the picture. We can come here to the picture properties. Actually, we want the size of the picture properties. And you come here to the size. There is a property over here where we can make sure that if we move the cells, that the picture moves with the size of the cells. So if we do that and we make this a bit smaller, it'll move the picture accordingly as well so we can do that obviously it won't go bigger than what it needs to be but it will stick to that so that is a property i'm not sure if that's what they want but i'm doing it anyway just in case let's look at the next question full cell a3 to appear the same as cell a2 so a3 must appear the same as a2 so a3 a3 which is this block must appear the same as a two as this cell over here. So we're going to use the format painter. I'm going to click on the format painter and we're just going to click on that and then format this one so that it appears. So it looks the same. So it's got the same type of fill and so on. So there we go. So we change a three to the same as a two, then rename the worksheet sheet one to missions. So we looked over there, we were in the right sheet. So we're going to click over here and we're going to change that to missions. So there we go. So change the name. So you can just double click on it or you can right click on it as well. There's another option. If you right click on this sheet, you can also rename it that way. That is another option. 3.4. Use a count if function in F3 to determine how many projects have a budget greater than 55,000. F3, we want to see how many have a budget greater than 55,000. That means greater. That's not including 55,000. It's just greater than 55,000. So if we come here to f3 f3 is over there and there are the projects so we're going to use a count if formula now so them to tell me which one to use count if takes in two parameters the range where do we want to find all the project with the budgets these are all the projects so i'm going to click on the first one and drag all the way to the bottom which is somewhere down there that's great so there is the first bit and then i'm going to put a comma and then i'm going to put my criteria we want the projects that what did they say must be greater than fifty-five thousand. so we're going to say greater than fifty-five. 5,000. That is my criteria. But because it's a criteria, remember, we must put them in double quotes. Put your criteria in double quotes. And so let's see how many there are. And there are 22 projects that are more than 55,000. 3.5. The data in column G incorrectly displays values for the recycling air pollution. Add a spreadsheet feature to column G to fill the cells with a color of your choice where the target pollution is indicated as air pollution. Okay, so let's go over here. So we're going to look at, they said, column G. So let's go to column G. Here we are, column G. So we're changing the color of these blocks over here if this block over here says the let or says the word air so that's what we want to indicate and do they want us to change the font or the fill they said fill the cell so we want the fill of the cell so we're not changing the color of the cell so we're going to select all the cells that we want to apply this rule to they said all the cells so let's go all the way to the bottom 
Okay, that's great because that's what they said, right? They said the data in column G. So that's what we want. So we want all the data and we're going to come here to conditional formatting and we want to apply a new rule. And the rule is if the sales value, if it contains, is it or is it a formula? Well, we can't say if we're not looking at this particular cell. We're looking at that particular cell, this, the range C. So that's actually a formula. So let's use a formula over here to see which one. And our formula is equal to that cell over there, which is C6, is it C6 or 6.5? C6, up until C, I think the last cell was C55. We want that to equal to the word air. I'm actually gonna make that a capital A just to be sure. So I know it looks weird. So if that cell C6 to C55 is equal to word A, we want to change its format to what? Do we wanna change the fill? So we wanna change the color we want to change the color to the fill. So there we go. There's the fill. So we can choose any color we want. Um, because it's all green. Yeah. Let's use a different type of green. Let's use a green there. Or let's make a different. Let's actually make it a blue. So we can see the difference. I'm going to make it blue. So if it's equal to air, make it blue. Now, if I go, okay, you'll notice that all the air ones, do you notice how all the air ones are now blue? So it's working definitely. Another way that you could have done that as well, just little, little tips and hints here. If we went and removed that particular uh, clear the rules clear all rules from selected cells if i wanted to add another type of formula remember it's a formula because we're not looking at that particular it's the cell itself we're looking at a different cell you could say equals c6 equals to air and it would copy that formula down for each one but the key here is to make sure that there's no absolute cell referencing on that if there was cell referencing particularly on the six part then when it copies down it, this block would still be referring to c6 and this block would refer to c6 you want it when it copies down the conditional formatting that it goes c6 c7 c8 so that's why we're not going to put conditional formatting on it so let's just change the color and see if that one works if c6 if we say just c6 it will copy it down to c7 c8 and so on so let's try that and there we go it works just as well so you can use either one of those options 3.6, the project is categorized as small, medium, or large, depending on the number of participants in column D. Insert a lookup function in J6 to determine the project category based on the number of participants and the list in the categories workshop. Okay, so we, we want to put a formula in J6, and we are looking at the number of participants in column D, and there's a categories worksheet that we'll get the data from. So those are the three things we need to take note of. So we're looking for J, this is where we're looking at. They will put in values for the other ones they're not based on formulas but th that's what we know the answer should be so if we copy our formula down it should stay those particular values so we're looking at this block and we're looking at column d we're looking at that particular number and then we're going to go down to category so let's say 68 we're going to come here and so we're going to go across here and if we find a value so 68 would be would be somewhere over here so between number of participants i would assume would be a medium because it's just before the 71 so we go like 51 no it's about that so i'll come down here to medium notice that we're moving across the top when we're looking at our value so that means we're going horizontally and then going down so this is an h lookup so let's try that quickly so we're going to come over here let's try this we're going to click over here we're going to say equals an h lookup First of all, where are we looking first? What is the lookup value that we're looking for first? We're looking for that cell, D6. Then I'm gonna press a comma. Now, where am I gonna go? I'm gonna go to the categories worksheet. Now you'll notice we're now saying categories, exclamation mark, the D6 must still refer to its own sheet. And now in categories, now we're gonna select the data. Take note, we're not selecting the, the, the headings. We're just gonna select the data. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press the F4 so that we put the dollar signs around it because we want it to lock. We don't want when we copy the formula down for this the blocks to refer to this table and then this table and this table we always want to refer to this table and then before clicking anywhere i'm actually going to click here and stay here and press a comma because if i start clicking back on missions then it's going to change this category to missions and it messes things up a little bit so stay here d6 is where we want in the other sheet yeah we're in categories we want b1 to d2 which row do we want to get from well this is the first row and this is the second row so we look in in the first row and getting the answer from the second row so i'm going to put a two here and then 
the range lookup. This is where we would put a false. So we will only put a false if it is an exact match. We want an approximate match. If we want it exact, it has to be 30 to be small. It has to be 51 for medium. But we want it within the range. So like if it's 51 to just before 71, we want it to be medium. So we don't want an exact. We want a true one. So you can actually leave it out or you can say true and then close the bracket. So if you leave it out, it won't actually affect anything. But if it was an exact match, you must put false. Let's press enter and see what it does. Boom. And there we go. You can see that it's a medium. Now, if I copy that formula down, let's copy it a couple. These should stay the same just to test to see if it works. I'm going to go all the way down to medium. Did any of them change? No, but they're all now based off of your formula, which means that your formula is correct. That's how you can test it. So recap, you looked in D6, then you went across to the categories B1 to B D2. Make sure that you put absolute cell referencing. Don't select the, the, the headings, comma, which row are referring to, which number row. So the first row or the second row or third row, we want the second row. And then true for approximate matches, false for exact. And the last question is going to be this one, 3.7. The project coordinator will send notifications to prospective participants for projects that will start within the next 60 days inclusive of that date use a nested if function in k6 to display the following messages we can say notify if the project will start within the next 60 days okay from the current date oh so we're using today's date for these formulas we're going to use a star if the project starts with after 60 days from the current date and complete if the project has been completed okay so there are three things here to look at and we obviously going to use a nested if because they told me and so these are quite complicated but and so just something to take note of we obviously doing this paper in 2022 and this paper was set in 2021 so our data might not be 100 percent accurate but we as long as we do the formulas correctly we'll be fine so let's think about this if the project starts within 60 days of the current date so we've got the current date that what is within 60 days so in the next 60 days so the current date if we add numbers to a date that'll be the number of days so if we say the day that started is between now and 60 days time then we can say notify if the project is complete how do we know if the project is completed well i assume that the the date that it's completed is like you know, it's going to be after what date are we referring to first of all we are looking at the date of the project if that date has passed then obviously the the project has been completed so if the day so if we've passed that date then the date has then the, we've passed and then a star if the project starts after 60 days from the current date so i'm, I'm going to use that as my last case i'm just going to check these two and then this will be my last possible case so let's try this quickly we've got some place over here to work out if you want to Okay, now I'm I'm seeing these dates. We're gonna find that all these dates are already completed. So just for my sake, just to see that I'm I'm actually gonna change this date to 2022. And you wouldn't normally do this exam, but I just want to make sure that I can see when it's it's still gonna be notified and so on. So we're gonna put a formula in here. So the first if statement I'm gonna do. Let's first do. So first, if I if today's date is bigger than the date of the project and obviously we've passed the project and it's going to be completed so how do i get today's date well you can use the today function if today's date is a bigger date than the date of the project that means that the project has passed remember the later the date the bigger the value so if today's date is bigger than the the, the day of the project then it is completed okay so that's the one scenario that's the easiest one to do then we're going to have another let's just put nothing there and just see what it looks like so you can see that these are all completed but that one uh, that one well, two, 2022 that one's not completed you're going to find all of them completed because this is an old question or an old exam paper so therefore it's not going to give you the exact results so i'm going to come back here to the formula i'm going to come back here and i'm going to change the false part because we want another two options so in the false part we're going to now put another if statement and we're going to put i'm going to open bracket and close bracket so we can see it straight away so what's the question for this so we know if we get to here that the project is definitely it's not completed it means we, there's still a couple of days to go okay so it's, it's the date is in front of the project so we want to look here not, not that day that's a, that's a project budget as long this date if this date is 60 days away that means that this would be the bigger date so if this date minus today if you minus two dates it'll tell you how many days there are so those two dates if you minus them that'll tell me how many days there are until that 
that date because this will only happen if this date is after if it's still to come because we've already checked if it's before if it's still to come then we're going to check if that number is less than equal to 60 that means is the difference between that date and today's date is less than equal to 60 which will be in that case it'll definitely be there then we know that we must be notified so then the quote will be notify and if it's not completed which means we are the, the date has passed we have finished the project and if it's not 60 days away then it must be more than 60 days away which means we must just put the star if i remember correctly a star if the project starts after 30 days so i don't even need to calculate that because if it's not before the date if it hasn't been completed and there's only and there's, it's more than 60 days then that's the only other possibility is if we put a star over okay so it seems a bit complicated but we've broken up into little steps so let's try it so it says completed all of them should be completed but this one should say notify if I drag it down, there we go, notify. And if we made that date even bigger, let's make it 2003, then we should see that it goes to a star because that's more than 60 days. So you check the one scenario. If today is bigger than E6, which means today's date is bigger than that date, which means that date is in the past, then we say it's completed. If it's not in the past, that means that date is in the future, which means that is bigger than today's date. Then we check if that date minus today is less than equal to 60. Then we know that the difference between between today's date and that date is 60 days or less where we say notify and if it's neither of those two options then you say stop we should probably say greater than equal to because if it's on today's date it's obviously also completed as well so i'll keep it equal to the date as well just to be sure but that's i think how we're going to do that nested if break it down to little steps if you need to use these blocks to break it down to little parts you can do as well so you could say for example equals today or e6 for example you could say equals e6 minus today's date and then you will see how many days there are which is quite a big number there why is it so big i think the way it's formatted is custom let's change it to a number so there you can see it's minus 438 days since but you can see here with this one uh there it's 405 days in the future but if i made that 22 you would see that that's 40 days away the difference between that date and today's date is 40 days away and uh, that's question three so make sure that you save and let's move on to question four in the next video links to data files and other videos can be found in the video description for help with theory go to our other channel called mr long computer terms click that subscribe button or follow us on tiktok at mr long education and don't do it the long way do it the mr long way